Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss reballing BGA components using the universal reball fixtures. So these fixtures come with uh, standard stencils. They have a ball size and pitch. And what we do is, um, instead of having a custom stencil made, because that takes time if we get a chip in and we need to do it quickly, we just tape off the stencils for the BGA pattern. And I'll show you how that works. But basically you have three different types of um, universal reballing fixtures available. You have this smaller type here, and this has the um, things that hold the BGA chip, the little hardware, and you have to loosen up with the Allen screw and move them so that you basically get your chip where it's just about on the crosshairs. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as the corners are on the crosshairs here. This one here, you can see it's got a little adjustable. It moves in and out. It's a little bit easier to set the chip in. Let's put a little bit larger chips. And then this one here, it adjusts um, with the wheel in and out. I think uh, for ease of use, this one right here is probably the easier one to use because it's not as heavy and it's easier to pick up when you take the top off. This one's a little bit heavier, but it has um, some things that's a little bit quicker and we'll show you how when we get to that. The one thing that all four fixtures have in common is they have four corner screws. This this fixture and this fixture will adjust the Allen screws from the bottom side. And what they'll do is they'll push up on the um, top of this and allow you to have a little bit of space between your stencil and your BGA component. Because we're going to put a tacky flux on the BGA component and we don't want to get flux on the stencil. So we don't want the stencil to touch the component. So normally we'll have the stencil height up just enough high enough so the top of the solder ball just sticks out a little bit. Now this particular one, it has a uh, what they call thumb screws on the side, so you don't have to use an Allen wrench, you can just adjust it on the side by turning these screws. So again, it's a little bit quicker. Uh, these particular, these two here, you have to take the Allen screws out, open this up, and put the stencil in. This one here is magnetic, so I can put the stencil in, just put the magnet on top. So what we're going to do, once we get the chip in where we want it, we're going to tape off our stencil with some Kapton tape. And so for this particular chip, I took some Kapton tape and I just taped off the stencil pattern. I put the chip in, I put the uh, stencil on, and then what you, with any of these fixtures, what you're going to do, once you get the chip in, you're going to move this around here and you're going to line the pattern up to the pads on the chip and then tighten the screws. This one here, it's magnetic, it's relatively snug so you can move it. You could line this up to the pattern on the balls. There's no screws. The magnets will hold it in place and work well enough to put the balls in. So today we're going to reball using this fixture. So we'll take these two out of the way. Just want to have these in here so you get an idea how they work. And we'll get these two out of the way so we can focus on the one that we're using. So this one here, I've already centered the stencil onto the pads of the BGA. Move in a little closer if we like it. All the screws are tight and I've adjusted our four corner screws to have this up just a little bit so it's not touching the chip. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get a little bit of tacky flux. I'm just going to Brush the flex on the pads. I'm going to take this off to, off to do it. Make a watch here. I'm just going to put some tacky flex on the pads. So the tacky flex is sticky enough to help hold the balls in place, keep them from rolling too much. Uh, I'm using this NWS 4400 HATF from Amtec. Uh, we do sell that, so if you need to buy any, you can purchase it from us. Don't put, purchase the, do not purchase the Amtec fluxes on, line on eBay from China. Those are counterfeit fluxes. Uh, they're not Amtec. They just have a counterfeit label. And they will not um, work or provide you the results that the actual, the good Amtec flux will provide you. So I've got some flux on the chip. And I'm just going to take my finger and just smooth this out. I just want a thin film of flux. And I want to make sure it's covering all the pads. So it's nice if you do this under the microscope to make sure you have flux in all the pads. So the trick is here to have a thin film. If you put too much flux on, 
it'll cause the balls to roll because with these fixtures the balls are going to be standing there loose and we don't want to want them to roll if they do we have to do a little bit of touch up i'm basically just going to take a little kim wipe and clean that flux off my fingers um so now we flux the media chip put it back in the fixture Again, what we don't want to do, we don't want to touch the stencil with our fingers and get flex on the stencil because those solder balls will stick to the stencil. So our chip's in place. We're going to put the top back on. Zoom out a little bit here. You can just, I'm just going to go into the microscope over here and verify that we mix on center. Your chip, you know, even though it's tight in there, it can have just a little bit of movement, so I'm just moved it just a, a little bit. All my pads are perfectly on center. And for this particular chip, we're going to use uh, lead free solder balls. Let's get up my solder balls. I'm just going to take them and just pour a little bit in there, not too much. And we're going to, so we lift this up carefully, not to lift in the top. I'm just going to move those around a bit, get them in place. I'm going to get my tray here. And again, we're going to hold this together. I'm just going to put the excess side of balls in the tray. What I'll do, I'm holding this together again so the stencil doesn't come off the chip yet. I'm not ready. Any solder balls that are still sticking in there. I'm just going to take a little brush. You can take a brush and an exacto blade and just move them off from the top of the chip. This way I'm just getting rid of the excess solder balls. Brushing them over to the corner here. Okay. So they all look good. in a little bit here. Watch what I'm doing. I'm just gonna gently lift this up like this. There we go. Put the excess solder balls in the tray. Now the reason I put the excess solder balls in the tray just in case they got any flux on them, um, I don't want to put them back in the jar because they'll, they'll, they'll get you know the flux will get the, on the other solder balls and they'll stick together. So I'll just keep these in the tray. Um, you know they're inexpensive so we can Add them to our solder pot or use them for another next the next reball. But if they start getting sticky and clump them together, I usually just throw them in the solder pot and we use them for our solder pot. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Zoom back out here. I'm just gonna go and double check under the microscope again. Want to make sure we didn't get any movement that, that we're not missing any balls. So we do have, it looks like one ball here. Did roll over a little bit, so we can move that back on the pad. And looks like we had one ball stuck to the stencil. So we'll go back here to our tray. Pull one ball out. And put it in place. So we can get one ball on the tweezers here. There we go. Beautiful. So I'm, again, I'm just going to go make sure all these balls are pretty much on center. Some chips they'll roll a little bit, so they don't have to be perfectly on center. As long as they're touching the pad uh, around 90%, I'm comfortable with that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a circuit board or a plate that we can put in the oven. And I use these carbon plates that we buy online. And I'm basically going to take this off and put it on the carbon plate. And once it's on the plate again, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I probably disturbed a few corner balls off to put those on center because I'm sure my fingers hit them. Yeah, so we got. A couple of corner balls need to be pushed back in place. A 
it looks like a few balls stuck in my fingers. So you can, um, to avoid this, I got fat fingers, you can just use a uh, tweezers to remove it from the fixture when you're ready. Ooh, when I drink a lot of coffee this morning, don't drink coffee or your hands will shake. Wow. There we go. Right. So what we're gonna do here, we got the uh, slider balls all nice on the chip. And you can put these on the BGA Rework Station and heat them up on the BGA Rework Station to reflow them. We're going to go and put them in our tabletop reflow oven and reflow them. So I'll show you how we do that. So here we have our Puhu, Puhu, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Puhu Tabletop Reflow Oven. And these aren't anything high tech, they're a nice and expensive reflow oven. Um, and they're a good reason for just reflowing BJ chips. Uh, you can use them for reflowing circuit boards if you want. So it's, it's not a high end, not a real high end oven, but the cost is like very affordable. So we're going to press F3 for our English menu. And then this one here, I haven't tried it out yet, but this one's the new one. You can connect it to your external PC and run profiles on your PC. But for reballing, I'm just going to go with the simple um, pre-program pro profiles that are in the unit. So I'll just put execute on F1. And then we're going to go to F1 again. We're going to select our temperature wave. Oh, I'm sorry, F2, temp wave select. So we'll go to F2. And so you sort of follow the instructions on the screen. It'll give you, I think it holds like eight or nine different waves. So if we do F1, it'll move to the right, F3 to move to the left. So we got F1, I, this is a, uh, looks like, you can see the graph here, looks like it's going up and peaking, not holding a long time, at about a little over 250. This one here is just around under 250. Uh, this one here is around 180. And again, this one here is around 250. This one here is around 250, it's got a little bit, little bit longer um, uh, they hold, they hold, they hold a little bit longer at the peak reflows. I like this one, so we're gonna go. Um, this probably worked for lead or lead free, but we're gonna go with this one. This is wave um, five. So I got the uh, wave so in press there. F4. Oh, here we hit return. So we're gonna go back, and then we're gonna just gonna press F1 for temp wave execute. It's gonna run our profile, and it tells me that we have profile number five loaded, and it shows me what it's gonna do. So this is gonna run like a regular. Uh, reflow oven profile. It's going to be about a seven minute from start to top cool. It's around a one to two degree, I think it's two degrees, two or three degrees per second ramp. Um, and uh, this, oh, we didn't put our chip in, so it probably helps to put the chip in, so let's just return. <laughs> Have our chip here, so we're going to open the drawer. Put our chip in here. Close the drawer. And there we go. Now we're going to run our profiles. So temp wave execute, F1. Okay, so we're just going to let this profile run. And when it's done, we'll take it out and see how the chip looks. Okay, now, so the uh, profile is completed. The oven's cooling down. Get up and this up. It's hot. <laughs> let it cool down. Let me just take a look here. There we go. It looks like it's pretty good. So what we'll do is we're going to take it, we're going to check it on the microscope. And if a ball has rolled or a ball is off, um, what we can do is we can add, now that the balls are tacked in, in place, if, if we want them, if we need to do a little touch up, we can add a lot of flux and we can reheat it with a hot air gun, we can reheat it in the oven or we can reheat it on the machine. But basically, if we need to um, t do any touch up, I'll just add flux. And normally, I just take a uh, hot air gun and just heat up the area that I need to, to uh, touch up. Again, sometimes you might have balls rolled together. You might have a missing ball. So you'll need to use your micro soldering station to solder wick, add a little flux, and put the ball in place. But normally, if you, if you, get, if you get just the right amount of flux, like I say, you don't want too much, then the balls won't roll, and they'll be flawed center pretty easily. So I'm going to let this cool down, then we can inspect it on the microscope, and it will be ready to install.